All right, guys, welcome back. So today we are going to talk about staking, especially staking the Theta Guardian node. Now, there's a bunch of videos out there that already teaches you how to stake Theta, and that's through the easy way, through the GUI, or you basically download their client onto your computer, whether it's a Windows or a Mac, and you click a button and boom, you're staking. But we're gonna do things the hard way. We are actually going to set up our Guardian node on Google Cloud Platform. Why is this better? That is because it is better because we're not running it in our computer. When we run it through a client on our computer, what if all of a sudden, you know, the lights went out, there's no electricity, or what if there's no internet, right? Then you're gonna be offline, right? So you don't want to be able to circumvent that. You want to be online all the time. And really the only way to do that is really to use something like AWS, which I don't suggest going for because they don't have instructions for that but to go with GCP or Google Cloud Platform. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna host our Guardian node on Google Cloud Platform. Now this does require you to spend a little money because for you to have full availability at any time because Google has servers all around the world, for you to have 100% uptime, you basically have to pay for that. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna set up GCP, we're gonna set up our Theta node on GCP so we have 100% uptime all of the time and you don't have to worry about, you know, leaving your computer running all the time to keep your Guardian node up with Theta. All right, guys, so this has been a long time coming because I remember doing Theta videos when it was around $15 per token, and you guys were wondering, all right, dude, when are you gonna set up a Guardian node and show us how to do that? So now I'm finally showing you how to do that because I finally got out tokens needed. Now, I didn't wanna buy a node at 15K, so I waited it for it to drop. So it dropped down to around $2.83, and I picked up 2,000 of them. So basically, one of my nodes is gonna cost me $2,830, and I'm gonna put that on Google Cloud to take advantage of their servers and to maintain 100% uptime. Before we get started, I just want to ask for a tip before we start the video because you know, you get the best service if you actually tip your waiters before they actually give you service. Just kidding, actually. Give a nice tip. And the best tip you can give me actually is just to smash the like button and smash the subscribe button because all I want for these videos is for them to reach all the people that wants or needs these type of videos. So if you're gonna be happy with learning how to install a Theta Guardian node on Google, then this video is gonna be for you. And without further ado, let's jump into it. So the first thing you wanna do is Guardian node overview. You can read this description yourself, but basically in order to get a Guardian node, you need a thousand Theta. That's the minimum token amount to stake. The minimum hardware requirements are five megabytes per second, up and down for internet speed, four cores or more. Memory is 16 gigabytes or more. Now you could do this through the GUI, which I think is the preferred and easiest route because that's what it says here. And you could do it through the CLI, which probably would require you to know a little bit about programming because the CLI is the command line interface. You might get scared with that. But what we're really gonna do is we're gonna use the Google Cloud Marketplace because that is the best way to install our Guardian node. Now it does seem a little bit complicated because they bring you here on how to install through Google Cloud Marketplace, but it's actually really, really easy. I think what most people get scared of is the thing here that looks like code, which it is code. And that's what you also experience when you use the CLI, right? So once we are going to finish that, we're gonna go through the Guardian staking process, which is basically the same as the GUI and the CLI. So mainly the hard part is just the Google Cloud Marketplace. So let's get into that. All right, guys, so to start off, we're gonna go from here, this install through Google Cloud Marketplace. They have a link here. So what you wanna do is you wanna click that link. And when you click this link, it opens up to a new page. Now, I already have an account with Google Cloud, but I'm gonna switch to an account that doesn't have an account. So I'm gonna switch to my Course Hack account. And once I switch into there, what actually happens is that you would get brought to this create your account page with Google Cloud. So basically you just wanna click your country, agree and continue, and then click agree. And what happens is that you will probably be eligible for an additional $100 in free trial credits for a total of $400. And you'll receive these credits within 24 hours. So that's what's great about Google Cloud is that you don't need to pay to use it. You can, they give you credits for like the first 90 days or something. So that's what's great about it. Um, what best describes your organizational needs, you could just click like personal project or business idea, startup idea. I'm just gonna go with personal project. Click the terms of service, agree. 
and then click continue. So phone number, I want you to put in a phone number and then just send a code. I'm gonna do this and I'll see you on the other side. So what happened is that I put in a verification code, you know, you're gonna set up your payment profile because like I said before, with Google Cloud, you have to pay for to have like 100% uptime all the time. So you can use a payment profile. This is already associated with my account and you can put a payment method. This is already associated with my account. You can just review that. And then what you can do is click start my free trial. So over here, once you started your free trial, you can add a little bit more information that Google wants. We're just gonna put find a solution, click next. What interests you in doing service with Google Cloud? You know, it really is anything. Just put virtual machines, actually. We're not doing websites, we're just doing virtual machines. Click next, what best describes your role? You could really put down anything. I am an engineer, so I'm just gonna put down engineer and developer, click done. So now we are at enable required APIs. What you wanna do here is you wanna click enable. That'll enable them all. And once it gets enabled, you get dropped to this page now. I know the first thing you see is what the heck? About 200 bucks a month? That is the default that we get when we run it with uh, Google Cloud Marketplace using the deployment link that Theta has here. So what we're gonna do is we're definitely not going to do that because I can't afford 200 dollars a month and I feel like not a lot of people can. So Theta is not doing us a solid here. And when we look at the requirements, the requirements is so much more. They literally doubled that with what they have in the default. So what's the what's up with that data? That's that's ridiculous. So I did a little bit of research and it looks like this is what we have to do if you're gonna run a Guardian node with Google Cloud. So basically what you wanna do is, I mean, if you even try to make it custom, they won't let you do anything with this because you have to have at least eight vCPUs, eight cores and 30 gigabytes of memory. So basically we have to use this N1 standard Eight. I wonder if this will ever change because I would really want to run my own Guardian node in the cloud, but this is what we have. So you just click this and you click deploy. But note that I'm gonna leave this in the comments that you have another option of running Theta Guardian node in G pool. That's what I looked at. Uh, we're gonna take a look at that probably in another video, but for now we just click deploy our Theta Guardian node one is being deployed and we're gonna wait for this to finish. So make sure to click this activate. You can see that our Theta Guardian node has been deployed already because we see the status. But remember, you get a $300 credit and 91 days. You wanna make sure you click this activate to activate that. So click activate and you are good. So now this will be free for the next, I don't know, like 30 days or something because you get $300 and running one node is like 200 bucks already. So you're basically getting that free for one and a half months. So that said, the next thing I want you to do is go to SSH here and open a new browser window. So that'll open up what we call a shell or basically command line on the Google interface. Click connect. All right guys, so when you connect to your SSH terminal, you should see something like this and this is a fresh terminal. So you can see that the time is a little bit off because I'm doing this video in chunks because how Theta made it, sticking their Guardian node on Google Cloud, it's kind of insane how difficult the process is. But I'm going to show you another screen, another terminal that is what we call it, another shell to see what you need to do. So if we go to the installation guide, they would say that install through Google Cloud Marketplace, they would say that once you have SSH'd into this part, you can copy this data CLI query status and you can paste it in here and it'll show you something, it was supposed to show you something like this, but it actually doesn't. It actually gives you an error like this. So if you get something like this error, this is where you might wanna give up because it gets complicated or it gets something like scary. So we'll just close out of this for now because I still have another terminal. For yourself, don't close that terminal because you have some things to do. So to show you what I mean, what I have here is basically we're continuing from the terminal I just closed. You did not close your terminal yet. You could see that I ran this and I got that same failed status. Now, what I need to do is I need to run all these commands. Now, it does look complicated right now, but don't be scared. I'm going to explain everything right now. So basically, what you need to do is you have to go to install through command line and you basically have to copy this entire thing, copy that and paste it in your screen. So what I would do is I'll basically just go to a fresh console or a fresh shell. So let's do something like this. Um, so imagine that you are in a fresh, fresh shell 
And what you do is you just copy this one by one, copy that, enter that there, and then copy this and go back to your screen, enter that there and go through every single line until you go to chbank. Go through every single line and what you will end up with is something like this. So you could see that I did all of that here. And now we did the CH bin here, which is the last line in this install guide. And after that, if you did CLI query status, that still does not work. So that's where it gets kind of insane, gets kind of annoying. What you would do is you would actually launch the Guardian node. So basically you could see here on this line, I launched that Guardian node by copy and pasting into this line here. And what it does is it says, hello, Theta, you set up a password. So I already did this. I set up a password. And what it does is it will start to launch your guardian node. It does a lot of validation of the snapshots. You can see that as I'm showing you this, it's now importing the snapshots that I validated. So I'm still waiting, but I'm just showing you that I'm still going through this myself and showing you the entire process of how this is done. But installing guardian node with Google Cloud, huh, not easy. All right, so looking at this, we have validated snapshots that runs to 100%. We have imported the snapshots that also runs to 100%. So then you would get that snapshot loaded successfully. Things seem to be working and ultimately you just let it wait, let it run. And what will happen is you get a bunch of this, but you are finalizing the block. And you can see here on my other screen that you can finally run Theta CLI query status. So if you're wondering where I am, you could just do run LS and you could see that I have Theta mainnet. If I ran Theta CLI query status, you could see that syncing is true. So right now it is syncing. And that is exactly what is shown here. They do this Theta CLI query status. And right now we are waiting for it to hit false because once syncing equals false, so if we go back, once that syncing turns to false, that means that the node is synced to the latest block. So we're just still waiting here for it to sync. So after some time and again, you would probably come back and check if the syncing is false. All right, so if you're still with me, you might have closed your terminal. And here's the thing, if you ever close your terminal and just go back to SSH, click that and connect again, and you'll be fine. Because what we did is when we were installing our guide, what we did is we used this screen. So this is really important. You always should use screen when you're running your guardian node because screen allows it to run regardless of the shell being open or not. Because if you don't have screen and you close this shell, what will happen is that your guardian node will turn off. Screen prevents your guardian node from turning off. So what we can do is if we do screen dash LS, that will show us all of the screens that we made in the past. And if we do something like screen dash R, and we copy one of these, I think 28267 is our guardian node or is my guardian node. So we could see that my guardian node is still running. So what I wanna do is if I ever closed out both screens, because remember we had two, then I'll just open two back up with this SSH button, connect, and let's just resize this to something that's, or you can even minimize it. Probably doesn't matter to keep looking at that. So once we connect, you want, I want you to open the screen for the other one. So if we did screen dash LS again, and we copy the first one, I want to open that. Then what I want to do is screen dash R, and that will bring us back to where we were. So if we do theta query status, you could see that syncing is false. All right, so if you had went ahead and typed in theta CLI query guardian, like I did here, you would receive your guardian details. Basically the summary and the address is what we need. And if you look at the guides, basically that's what they tell you to do as well in this guardian node, Google Cloud Marketplace guide, and in the command line guide, what they tell you to do is go through and type in theta CLI query guardian. And then what we have basically everything we need in order to state. There's a little note here about TFuel learning. Basically what they say is if you have a thousand, you can basically expect TFuel rewards once a month. If you're a large staker, you need 100K plus to be a large staker, then you can expect to receive a reward every two and a half to three hours. So it's kind of like Bitcoin mining in this sense, right? But I'll leave it to you. I'm gonna link these articles 
or documents in the pinned comment or description below. So you can go ahead and read that yourself. But this is the staking process, right? We go to our web wallet and I always suggest doing through the web wallet because you don't want to do this through mobile. So what we want to do is we want to go to our web wallet here, go to stakes and go to deposit stake. So we're staking the guardian node and we are going to use our summary here. Now I don't suggest you use my summary and copy this big blob because chances are when you see this, I am have already turned off this guardian node and it won't be available. So you're probably gonna lose your theta tokens probably. So if you're seeing this guardian node summary delegated guardian node is required, Basically what's happening is that you copied wrong. So you have all these like extra spaces and what you basically have to do is just backspace so that there's no new lines or basically breaks from like this E here. So what you wanna do is just tighten things up. That's what she said. Oh man, it's probably why I never got laid back when I was in high school or university. But that's a story for another time. So after you've done that, you wanna click next. So with that, to confirm this transaction, all you have to do is type in your wallet password and click confirm. All right, so after that, according to the guide here, you will wanna go back to your guardian node and you should start seeing guardian boats. So let's just go back to our node. So here it is, you could see that in my log here, I have what they told me to see. Broadcasting guardian vote, aggregated votes, block, blah, blah, blah. So that is an indication that your guardian node is running and things are working. So if you actually go back to your wallet here, actually, and maybe you don't see this now, just go hit your wallet and then hit back your stakes. You should notice that your theta is zero because it's a stake right now. And if you go back to your stakes, you should see that you are a holder, a node type holder of guardian and the amount you've staked. And if you wanna withdraw your stake, you just go to withdraw stakes. I'm not gonna go through that with you, but basically it's really simple. You basically just read this process here you know, you click the withdraw stake button and then you just confirm and withdraw after entering your, your wallet address or your wallet password. So basically you just take this holder address here, which you can copy, go to withdraw stake, enter your node address, click next, enter your password, and then you click confirm and that would withdraw your stake, but I'm not gonna do that right now. But that's basically it. Now remember for these two screens, they're actually in screen mode. So what you can do is you can just go and X them to close them out. And that will just still keep your guardian node running because you know how to get back into it. Just do a screen LS and then get the ID of that screen to log back into that. But that's about it. So that's staking on a guardian node with Google Cloud. So I know what you're gonna ask next. You're just gonna ask, Donald, so is running Theta Guardian Node on Google Cloud worth it? And the clear answer from me is, no, it is not worth it. If you have a stake of, let's say, less than 10,000 tokens probably, then it is definitely not worth it. You have to be a large staker. And like they said, a large staker is 100,000 or more theta tokens. They can expect rewards in two and a half or three hours. But 1,000 tokens, 2,000 tokens, you're basically looking at a month to get your T-Fuel rewards. So with that, it is not worth it to run a Guardian node on Google Cloud because we saw the price of running it on Google Cloud. It was about $200. So basically running it on Google Cloud means you are business because with that, you also get write-offs on the bill that Google is gonna bill you for using their servers, using their cores, and you could write that off in your taxes. But as an individual, you have one or 2,000 tokens like I do, you wanna to stake to a guardian node, then I think the best way is literally through the web wallet or through the GUI, the easy way that people usually stake. Do not go through the Google Cloud way because you saw how involved that was. I wouldn't recommend anybody who is non-technical to really give this a shot because if if you kind of mess something up, it's really hard to recover and you don't want to mess with your theta tokens like that. So if you are non-technical or if you are a small staker, then just stick with the GUI, the easy way of doing it. But if you are a large staker and you have a lot of theta tokens, then it might be worth it to invest in Google Cloud and do it in a more commercialized fashion. Anyways, guys, that is all for today. In today's video, you learn how to stake a Guardian node on Google Cloud, which is amazing in and of itself. Other than that, if you've enjoyed today's video, if you learned something, then please be sure to smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, check out these other videos on cryptocurrencies and passive income, 
And remember, guys, continue working, continue building, continue inspiring. See you next time.